Hi guys, good morning. Today's topic is very important. This is writing a WPS step by step. What is the requirement when you are uh, prepare a WPS step by step? The basic requirement I will explain to you today. It is it's it should be as for the SME section nine. So I will explain the SME section nine WPS writing procedure. Now first things, write a holding procedure specification. What are the contents will be there? Contents is there that describes all essential and non-essential variables for each holding process used in WPS. So there will be described the all essential variable and non-essential variable for each holding process used in WPS. So this is the content of WPS. Second is also mention the supporting procedure qualification record. The WPS, it should be contain the procedure qualification record. Without procedure qualification record, the WPS cannot be complete. So when you have the WPS preparation, then there will be the pre-WPS first, then the procedure qualification records, then the final WPS will be preliminary WPS, then the qualification record, then the final WPS. This is the content of WPS so what are they essential variable non-essential variable if you see the essential variable you can see the asme section 9 it is clearly mentioned what are the essential variable and what are the non-essential variable for each holding process like smw gtmw gtw mink gmw all these things so how we know the format of wps from where you get the WPS format. So maybe written in any format suitable to the manufacturer. It is a manufacturer, every manufacturer have their own format, but it should be definitely as per the ASME section 9. If you go to the ASME section 9, then QW402. So it should be mentioned there, QW402, what are the requirement is there in QW402. So it will be clearly mentioned in the format. Ensure that all essential and supplemented essential variables are listed. So, if you see the QW, there is base metal, there is essential variable and supplementary essential variable. All variables are should be listed. If it is anything not applicable, so you should be mentioned in the format there is not applicable, but it should be there in the format because it is a code requirement as me section 9. Now you see the step by step procedure quality procedure uh, preparation AWP. First is selection of a suitable welding process. So this is a very important. Without welding process, we cannot prepare the WPS. First is the which welding process we should know SRW or GW or GTW, which one. Fill in the suggested format of PQR. So suggested format is there in the PQR procedure qualification record. So what are the records that are there that will be filled in the PQR? Ensure that all the welding variables are covered. So as per the ASME section 9 essential variable, non-essential variable, all the supplementary variable, all the variables should be covered in the PQR record that it should be covered. No, nothing should be left. Then make a preliminary WPS based on the above PQR. So based on the above PQA, you should have the one preliminary WPS. Then you have to weld a coupon as per the approved w, above WPS. Then above WPS, there is a WPS. Mean after PQA finish, there should be a WPS you can finalize. Then you have to make the old coupon on weld you have to do as per the WPS and you have to prove that PQR it is fulfilled the requirement then the WPS can be used at site. Now weld a coupon as per the above WPS you are welding a coupon as per the WPS carry out the examination examination means there is examination is required as per the ASME section 9 if it is maybe band test if you maybe face band test maybe root band test maybe tensile test and also the radiography test so you have can check the ASME section 9 what are the requirement for the particular process and particular uh, maybe diameter maybe thickness of the plate what you are doing welding so it is clearly mentioned in ASME section 9 so carry out the examination 
make final WPS and PQA if the result is satisfactory. If the result is satisfactory, then only you can make the final WPS PQA and client then client can be approved that WPS based on the PQA. It provides direction for a specific welding. This WPS, the direction, they will give the specific welding, not the different type, means, means the, if there is a essential variable, you have to follow that essential variable. You cannot beyond this limit. If, if you doing anything beyond this limit in the WPS, then you have to require the new WPS. WPS format is available in ASME section 9. It is available in ASME section 9. It is available. You can see the WPS format. Each WPS shall be assigned with a unique number. So, for the uh, clearly recognized in the site or the older for the welding inspector, the WPS will be have the equal one of the assigned unique number. So, everybody can understand or uh clear the site if anything happens is which wps has the problem prepare a test coupon as per wps now you have prepared wps and pqa now you have to prepare a test coupon how coupon site it is normally if you see the as per section 9 300 mm into 150 mm plates or pipes if you go 150 mm long as specified in wps so what are the mention in the WPS, what are the pipes and what are the coupon size, then you have to prepare the same one. Length of the plate or diameter of the pipe shall be capable of include all mechanical things. So you have to check also this length and diameter, they can do the all mechanical test. Then only the peak wear can be finalized and peak wear can be approved. If every item ready required as per written WPS, you have to ready everything when you are doing the test coupon as per the written WPS. If it is infrared thermometer is required, you have to require the infrared thermometer as per the WPS. It should be it should be there at the time of welding. In every document like the welding gauge, you have to check the root gap maybe that time you have to require the welding gauge so everything every item you have to require plate welding machine it should be calibrated so this is these things i am just a giving example every item already required as per the written wps complete the welding by a reasonably skilled welder definitely before the welding we have to check that this welder is the approved welder by the client and the contractor this should have the older card then can holding the they can holding the wps all welding variables shall be used within the limit specified in wps like what is the limit limit means if the wps mentioned the base metal it should be range 18 to 18 mm to 36 mm then it should be base metal the base metal thickness should be this range only it should not be beyond that range all variable actually used shall be documented as an extra to pick where. So all variable, wherever you are finished the all test documentation, the report, it should be attached with the pick where for the annexure. So in that basis, you have to finalize the WPS. I think this one you understand, prepare a test coupon, what are the requirements, what are the uh, size of the plates. Now NDT of weld coupon, this is optional. X-ray or radiograph the oil joint, not a code requirement. This is not a code requirement. This is the client requirement. If client need to satisfy, then ask to contractor make a radiograph for this oil joint to give a uh, old defect joint to check the old defect joint, the soundness of the old metal. Mark transfer tensile and guided paint as per QW463. This is the requirement as being section 9 QW463. You have to mark the transverse tensile and the guide band test. Eliminate defective old portion if any while marking the test specimen. If, if you think the some area of the old test portion, old test area uh, of the plate, full plate the defective area you have to remove 
while the marking the test specimen. Preserve RT report and X-ray film as annexure to PQR. So you have to preserve the RT report and X-ray report in the annexure of PQR means you have to attach in PQR. Type of test required. What are the type of test required? Old metals should also have the essential properties of the base metal. So you have to check the old metals should also have the essential properties of the base metal. So there should be matching properties it should be there, old metal and the base metal. Qualification on groove welds also qualified for the pellet weld. If the qualification some welder is qualified for groove welds, he also qualified for the pellet weld. Now procedure qualification in any position qualified for all position. That means procedure qualification in any position. In any position qualified for all position. So any position he is qualified means 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G. 6G. All position is qualified means he is qualified for all position. Provided welding process and electrode are suitable for use in specific position. So provided welding which process and the electrode which are suitable and specific position which position this is mentioned in the WPS. Where notch toughness is a requirement of construction code, the procedure qualification should be carried out in 3G or 6G only. Yes, if, if you think, if it is client requirement, the notch toughness is requirement, then the procedure qualification must be done or should be done in 3G or 6G only. If you not done, sometimes the client will tell you that the, you have to proceed your qualification in 3G or 6G only. Welder who makes successful procedure qualification test is qualified to weld in applicable position. Means which welder is doing the procedure qualification or doing the welding for the procedure qualification test, that welder is certified or qualified welder to do the welding at production area for the WPS, for this WPS. Mechanical test QW451 group world mechanical test. That is different thickness, different requirement. Up to 9 mm thickness, transfer tensile is two number required, root bend is two number required, his bend is two number required. From 10 mm to less than 90 mm thick, you have to do transfer tensile is two number, root bend is two number, his bend is two numbers or side bend is four number. You can do the transfer tensile two number and root bend and face bend. If you are not doing, then you can do the four side bend test in place of face bend and root bend. That would be acceptable. And from 19 mm and above thickness, if you see the transfer tensile two number and the side bend four number, this is enough. So this is enough from 19 mm to above thickness. So this thickness requirement, you have to know the type of test required based on the WPS, which test is requirement as per the thickness. Now location, which location you have to marking from the test specimen. If you go QW463.1 plate less than 19 mm, you can see less than 19 mm thickness 463.1. Do you see the discard? You have to remove this area. Discard this area is not the, uh, done the good welding, so you have to remove that area. Balance plate is this one. So this one and this one. Here is the root bend two number. You can see root bend here. One root bend, two root bend. Face bend here one face bend and here one face bend. That means two face bend and two root bend is completed. Now reduce section tensile to number here one tensile and here one tensile. This one also discard. So two number root bend, two number face bend, and the two ten, reduce tensile uh, reduce tensile two number two number. So this one is completed two two number uh, two number root bend two number face bend and the two number reduce tensile. So you understand how you have to mark in the plate less than 19 mm. When plate thickness is 19 mm and more in place of root and face bend, we have to do the four side bend shall be taken. 
if it is 19 mm and more then you have to root bend test bend in place of you have to do the four side bends shall be taken location of test specimen from test coupon this is a pipe this is a fill plate already finished now with the pipe pipe how we have to location you can see the mention at the rate is the reduced section tensile to number here is the reduced tensile this area and this one is the reduced tensile this two area and this found bends root face or side that is bent this 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 symbol you can see here 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 four means root and face or side you can see the root bend face bend or side bend you can take for the four two root bend or two uh, phase bend you can see here the phase bend here phase bend here root bend here root bend here so two root bend two phase, phase bend if it is more than 19 mm plate then you have to do four side bend then four side bend and the reduce section tensile to number here one and here one so the complete they will the test specimen will be completed the test horizontal plane and pipe is holding in horizontal fixed position so it is very clear the location of the test specimen from the test coupon qw 463.1 and the pipe thickness is 19 mm or more in place of root and face four side bends shall be taken now reduce section tensile specimen this is a reduced section tensile specimen from pipe QW462.1. You can see how we have to mark the reduced section tensile specimen, how we have to sketch that area, and how we have to mark and how to prepare this test, tensile test. You have to see that this is the full area, the tensile. This area uh, you have to mentioning that part the reduce uh, this is the radius this radius and this should be 6 mm and uh, uh, from all four side you have to mentioning this all four side one two three four this four side you have to mentioning you have to do weld width this is the weld width okay and the mentioning edge minimum this is the uh, edge this is the 19 mm and the original thickness this is the plate original thickness and the 25 mm radius this is you can see here 25 mm so this is the reduced section tensile specimen qw 462.1 this is the marking of that you can see the qw 462.1 this is the marking you have to do after that uh, this uh, tensile test specimen to go to the tensile test area for the testing acceptance criteria for test result so now we have done the all testing like root vein phase vein tensile test everything you have done now what is the acceptance criteria then that basis we have to finalize the peak where is accepted tensile strength if you go qw4222 and qw153 minimum tensile strength of metal used so minimum tensile strength what are the minimum tensile strength? You have to check the minimum tensile strength, what is there, then it should be more than this uh, tensile strength, what is achieved in the peak wear. Minimum tensile strength of older material when two different material tensile metal is used. If there is a two different material, then weaker material, we have to check the two different minimum tensile strength are used. If the specimens break in the base metal or hedge, if the specimen breaks in the base metal or hedge, then tensile strength shall not be less than tensile strength shall not be less than 95% below the minimum specified tensile strength of the base metal. So this is the rules of the uh, tensile strength uh, acceptance criteria. Bend test QW 163 opening not more than 3 mm in any direction on a convex surface which is old and high area means old and high area in the old and high area there should not be any direction there should not be any opening should be there in 3 mm in any um, surface and if you go the convex or convex, convex 
concave or convex surface there if the bend test is there then uh, there should not be any opening is there more than 3 mm it is 1 mm it is acceptable but more than 3 mm it is not acceptable general note is there for tensile test failure in hedge is considered as piece metal failure if tensile test if you think if you see the hedge area there is a failure means your base metal is failure whereas the bend test the failure in hedge is considered as old metal failure means it is total different if a tensile test if it is hedge area failure means base metal failure whereas the bend is the failure of hedge it means the old metal failure so this is very important general note you have to remember acceptance criteria for procedure now fillet oil micro examination that is the for group oil now is the fillet oil cross section of the oil made up and hedge shall so complete fusion and freedom from cracks when you are doing the cross section for the fillet oil macro examination in the hedge area you have to check that there should be complete fusion hedge area and freedom from cracks there should not be any crack there shall not be more than 3 mm difference in the legs in the fillet oil. In the two side fillet oil, the two side you have to check the upper and the down side, the 3 mm leg length in the both sides should be there. It should not be more than 3 mm difference. Means one side 8 mm, another side is 5 mm. It is acceptable if it is 3 mm. In inside the 3 mm but if it is more than if it is 4 mm another side is 8 mm then it is not acceptable you understand my point procedure qualification record PQR format what will be the available in SP section 9 format QW 483 you have to check QW 483 what are the PQR format is there record all relevant data in the format you have to record what are the requirement for essential non essential variable and the uh, what are the test specimen what are the testing is required all these things are the record should be in the PQR format record actual value range of all essential non essential and supplementary essential whatever whenever required variables so all the record you have to record the actual value what you have done at the time of peak weight. Record all mechanical test result, attach all test reports and welding parameter used as an actual of peak weight. You have to attach in the peak weight all the test report and the welding parameter. So all mechanical test result also like the tensile test. Assign unique number of each peak weight. You have to also unique number required for the each peak weight. WPS number shall be referred in peak weight. There should be WPS number in the PQR so they can check in the PQR which WPS they are following. Type of test conducted, which type of test conducted should be mentioned. Number of test conducted, result of test, all these things we have to mention in the PQR. A PQR should be certified by the manufacturer. So in the PQR, should be certified by manufacturer in the base or the WPS. The, 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 the WPS and the PQR should be certified by the manufacturer. The base on the PQR, the welder, welding inspector, or the welding supervisor check the whole things. The PQR is acceptable and uh, based on the WPS is acceptable based on the PQR, then it will be approved. Changes to PQR are not permitted. However, correction can be made, for example, Changes of PQR not permitted. If cannot change after PQR, everything is done, the actual value, everything, you cannot change anything. However, correction can be made, for example, like you can do the correction, like P number or F number or any other information is wrong, then the same can be corrected. If you think the P number for this particular base metal is mentioned in the wrong, then you can correct it. Correction can be done. But because this is the type of error. Additional information can be incorporated at a later date, provided it can be substantiated as having been part of original qualification condition by some lab record or similar document. PQR used for supporting WPS should be available for review by the inspector. So, 
Finally, the inspector should be reviewed and approved by the approved the WPS. That time, the PQR, all the supporting documents should be there with the WPS. PQR need not need not be available to welding operator or welder. PQR is no need if the WPS is qualified. If the WPS always required at the site, PQR is not mandatory. So this is the procedure qualification record format. What are the requirement is there is a very important all points you have to remember when you are doing the uh, rating and WPS. You can see for QW483, it is clearly mentioned. Uh, this is the format, how it's look like. You can see also in ASP section 9. Thickness limit for a boob brought weld procedure. So there is a thickness limit. If you go boob brought weld procedure, what are the thickness limit? If you go the QW451, it is clearly mentioned thickness T test coupon welded. Range of thickness T base metal qualified in MM. Thickness of T of the deposited weld metal qualified in MM. This is very important. If you go the one plate is the thickness of the test coupon 1.6 mm. The base metal minimum is T means 1.6 mm and the maximum is 1.6 into 2 3.2 mm can be welded for the base metal and if you go the thickness of the T weld metal qualified then you have to go the 2T only. So I think uh, you understand the whole things uh, WP step by step it is the basic requirement for the preparation and you have if you need the go details then you can check the ASME section 9 but minimum things you have to uh, understand first then you have to uh, create your you have to write your WP what are the code your requirement uh, to prepare the WP I think uh, this is very helpful for you people if you have any query any question Please uh, just uh, comment uh, in my uh, YouTube comment box then so that I can help you. Thanks for watching the video and those people still not subscribe my channel, please subscribe to get regular video.